Attention staff and students, please start the lockdown procedure. I repeat, we are going into lockdown. Please lock down now. You guys know if there's supposed to be a drill today? I think the principal asked you a few years. It was obviously a surprise one. Clearly Mr. Anderson didn't know about it. Mr. Anderson is in the third shift. It's not like he's going to teach us anything anyways. Hey, he's the one who let five kids out at the same time. No way we all had to use the bathroom. Well, Quinn, you trying to get freaky with us? Will, no one wants to do that with you. Your mother didn't complain about it last night. Shut the fuck up. Hey, they're gonna start patrolling the halls soon. Keep it down. Man, I fucking hate these drills. A few psychos shoot up a school, and now we can do three of them a year. Hey, at least we get some his class, dude. Oh shit, the box! Oh man, you're right! He's got our phones in that stupid box. Hey. Don't forget, you're the reason for that thing, Quinn. Constantly texting in class. Texting a girl literally three rows over? You and Claire got all our phones taken away, you moron. Hey, it's almost a scale. Just about another inch. That's what she said. <laughs> <laughs> what are we always texting her anyways? Who, Claire? <laughs> no, fucking Steve Adelstein. Oh my god. Dude, imagine sending Steve Adelstein a horny text. He'd shit his pants. He's such a fag. Totally. Dude, I can't believe he carries a briefcase to class. <laughs> yeah. I don't know, man. That guy's smart. He'll be your boss one day, Will. He can boss my ass. He might be smart, but I got a PhD in bitches. Sure, buddy. Only girl you got a chance with is your sister. I don't know. I, I heard Steve Allison might have been, like, abused or something. Oh, shit, really? I'm not sure, but I'm pretty positive, man. Thanks for bringing that rain cloud, Eeyore. Holy crap. I'm just saying, I never had a problem with that kid. I always loved being in his group because he does all the work. You guys know Chelsea? Dude, she's the fucking worst for group work. Wait, Chelsea Patterson? You guys heard what happened to her, right? No. no. Oh my. How uh, do I have the fucking story of a lifetime? All right, so get this. Eric Sheen is dating her, right? And apparently, they make out all the time, period. They'll make out anywhere, anytime. So apparently, they're making out at her house, and her dad's upstairs in the kitchen. So Eric takes her downstairs to the garage. Uh, er uh, Chelsea's dad is some like big rich guy, so he's got one of those three car garages. So there they are, making out, getting all hot, hot and heavy, heavy. <laughs> you know? Yeah. And old Eric hikes up that skirt of hers. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Stop it! Oh, Stop it. that naked ass onto the hood of, his da of her dad's classic. 1969 Stingray Corvette. So, there they are, going to town, and I can only imagine the thrusting and love pounding going on the hood of this beautiful classic car. On a side note, it's cherry red. Oh, oh yeah, that's so, sexy. So, anyways, there's there's Eric going to town, and right when they're both at their peak moment, yeah. who walks in? Daddy Warbucks! No! no she did not! That's right, my friend. Daddy walks in and sees a special little girl having a special little moment on the hood of his special little car. Here's the rub, my friends. Apparently, as Eric pulls back, the dad becomes enraged, not by the deflowering of his beautiful little angel, but by the perfect ass cheek <laughs> yeah. dent on the hood of his classic 1969 Stingray Corvette. I cannot make this shit up. Oh my fucking so, what, what happened? Well, apparently, the dad got so pissed, he now wants to press charges against Eric. And Chelsea's so scared. Who knows how that's gonna play out? Charges? Seriously? That's what I heard. Who knows? Her dad's a real prick. He'll probably do it. Oh my god, that's fucking crazy. Well, there's a lot of dick fathers around. How's that going, anyway? I don't know. You think that after you see your mom and your dad throwing shit, Hitting each other. They'd at least try to stop fighting. I don't know. My dad's just a dick. I don't know what to tell you. All his big moral lessons, big talk about my future. All he's managed to do is work a job he hates, drink every night, hit his wife in the face, 
Malianate is only kid. Guy's the perfect fucking cliche. And I can't wait to get the hell out. Sorry. The hope of breaking free keeps you going. No matter what they say. Fucking yeah, that can be hard when you're stuck. The other thing that keeps me going is the chance to see that butt car. <laughs> She's got a great ass. <laughs> oh. Uh, yeah. I can't wait to get out of this town. I mean, don't get me wrong. I don't have the same problems you do, Will, but it feels like our parents just want us to run a teenage rat race to compensate for the ones they run every day. Get up, go to work, and try to define their lives by their paycheck and what they can buy. And then they come home and hope that somehow their kids' success in sports and their good grades prove they're excellent parents too. What a bunch of bullshit. Totally. My dad talks about my MVP awards and sports ability like it's somehow related to his super sperm. Heck, man. Teachers get off more on that sports crap than anybody. I mean, I don't think they've left that high school mindset if you think about it. If you're in the right neighborhood, you've got the right parents, and you're athletic, you've got it made. Hey, hey don't blame me because I got lucky. <laughs> yeah, my parents definitely don't get who I am. Anyway, let's move on to something important. Quinn, how are things with Claire? Claire's cool and all, but <clears throat> if you want to talk about parents living through their daughter, it is brutal, the pressure on her, oh my. But then again, that's why she needs a release, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Your girlfriend's pretty hot, dude. She is striking. Striking, Oliver? What are we, in the 1920s here? You're right, Will. Hot was the perfect descriptor. I'm sorry I went with more than three letters. I'm hoping you're not too confused. <laughs> All right, Oliver. Which damsel in our school do you fancy at this time in your development? I, I don't know. I just don't think I have much in common with the girls here. <laughs> just tell them all of it. Shut up, Luke. Grey's Anatomy. He likes Grey's Anatomy! <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I fucking I knew it! <laughs> well, Oliver, if there was one girl in this school for you, it'd be Grace. It would. I approve sure. of your decision. Shut up! I just gotta figure out how to talk to her. I keep telling him to just ask her out. I know she likes him. Shit's a slam dunk. Thank you, Luke. No if it's problem. so easy, why don't you just ask out Emma? Ooh, I fucking wait, hate you. Wait, wait, wait. Emma who? Thank you, Oliver. Please remind me to kick you in the nuts in the near future. Oh, come on. You outed me with grace. Payback's a bitch. Wait, Emma who? Okay. But I can, I, like, I can talk to you guys, right? Like, we're cool? Sure. Yeah, yeah sure, of course. Yeah. <clears throat> We've been buddies forever. Hell, I'd be cool if you were dating Steve Adelstein. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa, guys, let's not go that yeah. far. Yeah, you're right. You're right. Too far. Okay. It's Emma Balin. Oh. What? Oh, seriously? Shooting for the stars, eh? You got a better yeah. chance of getting Mr. Anderson into bed than her. <laughs> yeah. I know. It's just I've I've loved her for years. <laughs> what? <laughs> what? <laughs> years? Emma Bailey. Shut up. You know, fine, fine. Okay, who who are you into? Well, okay, guys, I got a big revelation. The person I like has the softest hands, <laughs> the smoothest skin, oh, yeah. and a smile that warms my heart. And when they're walking down the hall, they got a rump. Yes. That just won't quit. It's, it's all of it. Steve Adelstein. It's all of it. Steve Adelstein. When I'm sitting in class every day, I just look at them yes. and dream oh, of the moment yes. that I can be holding their hand. <gasps> Hold that hand. And slowly yeah. guiding it to my Monty Python. Monty Python. Oh, crud. Guys, it's time I tell you who I've loved for years. Yes, yes, yes. Let's tell us. Tell us. Sweet. Sweet Mr. Anderson. I knew oh, him! Oh, yeah! You have to fight me for him. Oh, oh I will. <laughs> oh. Who do you really like, Will? Honestly, boys, I got the internet. Plenty of alone time. No woman in this school that can compete. Oh, man. You know, that's a good point. So much for getting bitches. Oh. All right, Chris. Your turn. Who do you like? 
Yeah, Chris. You over there, the man of mystery. You talk to plenty of girls. And the women love you as a friend. Well, I, I like Mr. Anderson. I, I can't get him off my mind. But come on, man. Tell us who you really like. I don't know, man. It's, it's complicated. I don't really like anyone at this school either. No, you don't get to do that. I can believe that Will has a sexual deviancy and a stock in the Kleenex Corporation, but you're too romantic. Plus, you're good at writing, too, so there's gotta be someone. No, I, I don't like anyone. Let's just drop this, guys. We're getting a little defensive now, are we, man? I just don't see why you have to like someone at the school and why you have to talk about it. Oh, whoa, okay, easy. We're just shooting the shit while we're stuck in this room. Yeah. bit weird. I mean, we're friends here. You're a good man. Five of us are always cool. I don't know what you guys want me to say. Come on, man. We're just asking who you like. Look, guys, I don't want to make this weird. I don't want to talk about this. I don't want anything to get uncomfortable, and I don't want anything to change either. So, let's just drop this. No, I gotta know. What kind of freaky shit are you into? Seriously, man, you can talk to us. I just don't know what you guys want me to say! Just tell us the name of the girl you like. Well, what if I don't like a girl, asshole? Well, then you're a fag! Well, then I guess I am! Wait, you're being serious now? Yeah. Calm down, man. Like, what's going on with you? We're all friends here. If you don't want to say anything, you don't have to. I shouldn't have been so hard on you. Yeah, but... We weren't trying to be dicks, okay? If you do want to say something, though, you can tell us. We're listening. I just don't know. It doesn't matter. I don't want to make things weird. Well, it kind of Shut matters. up, Will! No. Look, I'm not trying to cause anything here. I just want the truth. The truth is I've known that I'm not that into girls for a few years now. And if that makes me gay, then I guess I'm gay. But I'm not looking to freak anyone out here. And I don't want any of you to treat me like a fag or whatever. I see how it is. I know how this goes. I don't want you guys to be making fun of me behind my back, and I don't want to go to some rainbow club where everyone talks about being gay like it's the only thing that matters. Look, you guys know me. We've all been friends for years now. This is just something that I've been dealing with, and this doesn't affect anything. Well, it affects some things. What's that supposed to mean? Come on, Luke. We've known about this for a while now. What the fuck, man? Are, are you mad because I knew and I didn't tell you? Are you mad because you can't deal with being friends with a fucking fag? Okay, hold on. That's not fair. You knew about this and we had a right to know. We're your friends. And it's not fair for you to make it out like we're being homophobic or something when you're the one who's gay and who chose to hide this from us. It's not like we're living in the 1950s here. There's plenty of acceptance and plenty of support groups or whatever they are. And we're your friends. I mean... Hell, we know about Will's dad and all his stuff, and that's way more private than what you're going through. Hell, you'll be celebrated. Come on, Oliver. No, you come on. I'm not saying I have a problem with this, but we're allowed to be a little shocked and upset. What would you be upset about? I'll tell you what we'd be upset about. All the times that we've been hanging out, talking about hot chicks and who we want to get with, this entire time, we've been putting on an act. I'm not mad at you or anything, but it's kind of like you were lying to us. Lying? By omission. You could have told us. Look, I'm not trying to sound like a whiner or anything, but it's not the easiest thing in the world to tell your four buddies, let alone your family, that you're not that into girls. That you're gay. Yeah, that I'm gay! Look, it's not how everyone thinks it is. You have to think about everyone's feelings. How people may react. How some people may hate you. Or ditch you. And you're not even sure how to feel sometimes. Or even that if you're right. Because your parents and every other conservative pundit tell you that it's just a choice. And that you may be confused 
or mentally ill. So you just put it aside. And you sit through those conversations. Because you just want to be one of the boys that feel normal for just that moment. Fair enough. But you can't expect us not to be a little bit taken aback by it. Taken aback? How can you not like titties? Well, I still appreciate your brothers. <laughs> Agreed. Guys, I, I'm sorry I didn't tell you. I honest to God didn't know what to say or how to say it. I actually can't believe this is happening all right now. Neither can I. Can I ask a question? And I'm not trying to be funny or anything. I'm just genuinely asking. We've been hanging out for a while. We went swimming together. Just changed in the locker room. You've seen my junk. Should I be worried that you're going to send me flowers? For God's sake, Bob. You're an idiot. It's not like I'm attracted to any of you. You're my buddies, frankly. I'm not attracted to anyone. I just know what I'm not into, and I'm still figuring things up right now. All I can tell you is that the difference between us is that I'm just not that into girls like you guys are. Well, that's a pretty big fucking difference. Why? Because it is. Because I think it is. Because everyone here thinks it is, and because the whole world thinks it is. We've all been hanging out, and I thought I knew you, and I could trust you. But now, <laughs> now it seems like you're not even like us. Like you've just been pretending. I don't get why you're not going to any of those clubs. That's your true crowd. This isn't cool. None of this is cool. I like to know who my real friends are, who I can trust. And I didn't realize that after everything we've been through, everything we've done as friends, that some of us, Get to have completely separate, private fucking lives that are going to affect and reflect on us. Screw you, man. I don't have a problem with gay people, but I got a problem with my friend being gay. Come on, Quinn. This can't be easy for him. It's not like he told us he's some fucking serial killer or something. The guy's gay. What's the big deal? I hear what you're saying, Quinn, but... We all know and talk to gay people in the school, and we've never had a problem with that. This is different. Why? Because it is! What are our parents going to say? Huh? I've had this guy over at my house! We've changed in the fucking locker room! Forget the fact that some people might not fucking agree with his choice, but we have a fucking image to uphold. Okay, sure, we talk to everyone, but we don't hang out with just anyone. It's a bit harsh, Quinn. It's not like he's sitting there secretly stalking us. You sure? Okay, look. I guess it's fine if you want to be gay. I just... I just don't like how this affects me. Okay? Look. <laughs> it seems like everyone today can just be, do, or fucking identify as whatever they want, and we just have to accept it. Like, but just because something's important to you doesn't mean doesn't mean that we have to fucking change our way of living because of it. Like sports? That's pretty rich coming from someone who gets to miss lots of class, whose teachers rearrange lessons just because his team has a game that day. I've gone to pep rallies for sports I don't give a shit about, and you get treated like you're something special because your parents put you in a sport and kept you there when you were young. You get to hang out with all the, the cool people. The teachers love you. You win all the awards at, at graduation. So it seems to me that because something's important to you and your parents, that it affects all of us and we have to accept it. So don't pretend that who you are and that part of your identity doesn't affect all of us. The difference is you get a trophy, the cheerleader, a fucking pep rally, and I get called a fag. Have to hide who I am to my parents and get a fucking Rambo club that no one wants to be seen entering. It's not the same thing. At any point, you can go from football to basketball or jock to scholar or whatever group you want to be in. I can't switch teams. Believe me, I wish I could. I didn't even want to have this conversation today. Quinn, what would you do if you were in his shoes? I wouldn't be in his shoes. Why not? Because my parents didn't raise me that way. You think that this is because my parents? 
You think that if my parents put me in sports or read me different bedtime stories, I'd be more like you? <laughs> Will's told us plenty of horror stories about his parents, and he's not gay. Whoa, whoa, let's leave my folks out of it. I don't know what to think about any of this. And I didn't think that a code red could get any worse. Okay, guys. Look, how do we sort this shit out? The way I see it, we just, uh... We just forget this ever happened. We won't talk about it. We won't fucking think about it. We just move on. Sounds good to me. I'll try my best. It won't be easy, but I'll try my best to just let this go. Okay, fair enough. I'm sorry. It's all right. Don't worry about it. Just move on. Fuck that. I, for one, think this is total bullshit. Nah. Always right, man. This is total bullshit. Who the fuck do you think you are, man? Your so-called best friend, since we were kids, just told you his biggest, scariest secret, and you somehow make it all about you and your fucking reputation. You're an asshole for doing this to him, man. Agreed. And before you defend yourself, Quinn, just remember it's your sidekick here who opened a door that Chris didn't even want opened. I don't see how it's fair that you guys get to decide how to close it. What are you? His lawyers now? He doesn't need lawyers, asshole. He's not guilty of anything. Agreed. I don't see how you two get to judge and decide how we should all behave around his choice. For the last fucking time, it's not a choice! Hey, what are you guys doing in here? You guys not supposed to be in here when there's a code red. Oh, we're sorry, sir. We, we thought we were supposed to go to the nearest classroom, and this was the only one that was open. It's all right, Quinn. That was there when we got here. All right, gentlemen, let's go back to class. This isn't cool.